Today, I will tell you my very personal story about having or not having at all. Three months ago, I meant to speak here about a topic I have researched for years, female leadership. I meant to speak about how to get more women into leadership positions and how institutions will change when more women take over management positions. I would have given insights into research, talked about statistics and hands-on recommendations. I guess I would have mentioned Facebook's Sherry Sandberg and her book Lean In. And I would have also mentioned Yahoo's Marissa Meyer to give an example of another woman who made it. To give you an idea of my life three months ago, I was staying in San Francisco, I was talking to different startups, and I meant to be inspired. I had a busy schedule. I was working day and night to improve the KPI of my company and to remain social. So I got up early in the morning, did some sports, then I went to work where I often met people for lunch. I went to networking events, I hosted dinner parties at my flat, I went on random spontaneous weekend trips over the weekend to enjoy some time in nature or enjoy some culture. My Sundays I would again spend working in a beautiful coffee shop. I meant to climb the career ladder and I believed that by working hard I could become whatever I wanted to be. But then my life changed and I thought I'd have to cancel this talk. Because you must know that two months ago, I became the caretaker of my 12-year-old brother. So when my mother called me, who was facing a very difficult family situation, and asked me whether I could imagine taking my brother in, I immediately said yes. So from one day to another, I suddenly, somehow, became the subject of my own research. Only now, I see beyond the research and statistics, the real-life struggles of juggling a family life and a job. It was a massive contrast. I thought I had an objective opinion. And I can almost see people here smirking and laughing a little bit, wondering what did this girl think life would actually look like. And to be honest, I was also surprised how much my research about Sherry Sandberg and Marissa Meyer differed from actually reality. My brother used to live in a different city and went to a different school. I had two weeks to organize a new good school, daycare, oh, and get back from San Francisco. I now have a very different type of busy schedule. I get up an hour earlier in the morning, I then prepare breakfast and a school snack. I go to work, but I very often bring my own lunch so I can work through and leave earlier in the evening so that I actually have time to chat about homework or school. I sometimes manage to have friends over for dinner or I do some sports when the kid is in bed. Then I write emails or prepare presentations like this one. What actually also happened is I just had a week to kind of fit into my new life and then I started a new job at an ambitious startup in Berlin. So I do spend quite some time over the weekend to work on an Excel sheet or finish the things that didn't get done over the weekend. So life has really changed. And I was wondering how to manage all that. I always was a person with a lot of ambitions. I always wanted to manage and do a lot. Um, there was this time during my undergraduate studies when I was actually doing too much when at a certain point I got up at 5 a.m. in the morning to finish the schedule for a student club meeting, but the very same evening I was actually um, in a workshop session with my professor, I almost fell asleep. He took me aside as my mentor and he advised me that I was doing too much and I should slow down a little. When I told my friends, they all agreed and they said I indeed was doing too much. I was surprised, yet that was great business advice back then, and I cherish it until today. Not that I entirely succeed stepping down, but at least it's good to know in the back of my mind that it's okay to slow down. Only life as a caretaker, to me, feels just like that. And there's nobody that takes me aside and tells me to slow down. It somehow has to work, because there really isn't anything on that schedule that I could scratch off. 
So I was wondering, can I actually manage all that? And no, no. <laughs> At some point, there was a. At some point, I was actually really angry. Um, I couldn't cope with the assumptions and comments by those men who thought that they could not and would not have taken over the responsibility I took over, because their life was just too busy and their schedule was too demanding. They had to focus on their job. They had to focus on their, on their social life. I was wondering why was my routine worth less than theirs. Wouldn't everyone be incredibly impressed by a man taking over a child? But then I realized, yes, indeed, because I am a woman, I am more likely to take care of a child. 90% of children are raised by their single mother. Only 10% are raised by their single father. So society is used to seeing women take care of children. In addition, we get used to Sheryl Sandberg's and Marissa Myers out there having and managing it all. I read so many glossy, inspirational articles about success stories that I, to be honest, had little doubt that it's doable. Only reality is kicking in right now with me. And I wonder whether I had too many, too high expectations. At my very first parent-teacher conference I went, and it sounds very grown up to say that I actually went to a parent-teacher conference, so at my very first parent-teacher conference I went, it turned out that everyone had a support network. It would be foolish of me to think that I could manage it all without some things changing. So I need the support network. How does a support network look like? I need um, a good school and teachers that take care of education so that there is only a minimum of homework check in the evening. I need a good daycare system that doesn't feel like punishment to the kid. The New York Times had an article this October stating that good childcare costs just as much as a median family income. Who can afford that? And how on earth to find time to find that rare place, I can tell you it's very, very rare, to find that rare place while earning that income. Also, I need friends to take over the child for a couple of hours every weekend, so I have some time by myself. And most importantly, I need the flexibility and support of my colleagues. I need a good boss who understands that while I get in early in the morning as one of the first, I also leave early and I might work later in the evening. But some projects just require to be there, and it not only depends on a boss, but I just have to be there for face-to-face -face meetings. So that led me to the question, can I do my actual best when I'm not physically there? I had way less opportunities right now to lean in than I had before, simply because very often I am not there to lean in. Did I have too high expectations? Was it okay for me to expect to manage it all? How can I actually empower this person to one day be brave and inspired enough to give a TEDx talk like this one? So the past months I had a paradigm shift. I have to actively stop myself from expecting too much too fast. And I have to make peace with not being perfect, but actually making the best out of it. Just like right now, being here at TEDx Zurich, forgetting parts of my speech and not having the most beautiful slideshow, but being grateful that I can be here at all. So, what did I learn the past months? I don't know how to have it all right now. I believe a bit more honesty and hands-on stories in the media would help. Part of the current zeitgeist of my generation is the pride of defining itself through inspirational stories. But at several moments the past months, I was wondering who is actually there to go beyond just inspiring. And it's important that you don't get me wrong. I have drawn great and necessary inspiration out of Sheryl Sandberg and Marissa Meyer. Like millions of other women, I am grateful. But I believe now it's time to move beyond role models into like a more real-life setting, something more tangible. I still believe that hard work and inspiration are important, but I now know that behind the facade, 
of hard work is a support network and friends as the base for success. I hope I will cope better in the future with presentations like this or in general, and I hope that people will understand how difficult it is to struggle with expectations of others, and most importantly, your own. Thank you.